This police officer stopped the black woman at a traffic shop, but when he found out who she really was, something life-changing happened. Officer Carl sat angrily behind the wheel of his patrol car. He was sweating even though the cold February wind was blowing through the open window. Today was not his day. Everything in his life seemed to be going wrong. Bills were piling up, his kid's soccer practice was clashing with his overtime, and he had a bad feeling about his upcoming meeting with internal affairs. Earlier that morning, he had received a date for the meeting. This could mean the end of his seven-year career on the force. Carr slammed the steering wheel with his fist at the thought of that. That's when a car zipped past him. Carl snapped his head up immediately. It was a sleek blue sedan, and while it was going a little too fast, it was still under the speed limit. But Carl did not care. All the cop cared about was that it was a black woman driving the car, and he needed someone to vent his frustration on. He immediately turned on his car and went after the blue car. As he got closer to the car, Carl blared his sirens and used his patrol lights to signal the car to stop. The blue car pulled over to the side of the road with surprising swiftness, and the cop parked his car behind it. Officer Carl put on his mean face as he stomped out of the patrol car. He wasn't looking for speeding tickets today, just an unlucky person to teach a lesson. As Carl got close to the car, he peered through the window, but the sight that met his eyes made his blood run cold. The driver was indeed a black woman, but this wasn't just any driver. This was the exact woman who had caused all his troubles. If Carl was angry before, the sight of the woman made him furious. He gripped his baton tighter, ready to unleash his bad mood on the woman. This wasn't just a traffic stop anymore. This was a chance to assert his authority and make her pay. The truth was that things had been going badly for Carl for weeks. It all started when the first letter arrived at his doorstep. It was from Internal Affairs, the police department's own watchdog unit. Just the sight of that official letterhead sent a jolt of fear through him. It was very clear that it was not an invitation to a coffee break, and Carl knew exactly why. It was because of his two cop buddies, Tony and Mark. They had known each other for years before they even joined the force. And after seven years of service, they were partners on the beat and off-duty drinking buddies. But they had brought him big trouble. The trouble began with a knock on his locker room door one Tuesday morning at the precinct. When Carl looked up, he saw Tony and Mark looking at him with shifty eyes. They mumbled something about needing a favor, and before Carl could ask what was wrong, his friends had shoved a duffel bag into his locker. The content of the package sent shivers down his spine. Drugs. They were asking him to hold on to a bag full of drugs. Carl was shocked. He knew his friends had been bending the rules for a while, even going as far as taking gifts from petty criminals they arrested. But this was different. This was a whole new level of trouble. So Carl barked at them to take the drugs back. He didn't want anything to do with it. Tony and Mark were disappointed with him. They argued at first. Then they pleaded with him and even tried to bribe him. But Carl wouldn't budge. His friends finally stormed off in anger. The next day, the news went around the station. Tony and Mark were caught red-handed selling drugs from evidence to street dealers. They were exposed as dirty cops, the kind that gave the whole force a bad name. Officers from internal affairs immediately swarmed the precinct and hauled Tony and Mark away. But before they left, the internal affairs investigators turned to Carl and asked them some questions. They told Carl that they knew he was close to them, so he was going to get an invitation for them. Carl's world nearly crumbled as he heard this. He wasn't dirty, but being friends with dirty cops made him look suspicious. He tried to explain to the agents and tell them that he had nothing to do with it, but they weren't listening. Internal affairs didn't care about his excuses. They just wanted answers. Were you involved? Did you see anything suspicious? Did you turn a blind eye? Carl knew that the answers to those questions could end his career for good. Carl felt the weight of his seven years on the force pressing down on him. All the dedication, the sweat, the near misses, it could all be wiped away because of two bad apples he called friends. He wasn't a dirty cop, but right now, it felt like the whole world thought he was. And that made him angry. This was what Carl was thinking about as he looked at the black woman in the blue car. There were a lot of people he blamed for this whole mess he was in. And while the black woman was among them, the person at the top of Carl's blame list was Chief Brady. Chief Brady was the new police chief who had walked in and turned the entire department upside down with his fancy ideas. From the moment Brady took charge, the department wasn't the same. Starting from day one, the new chief had been shaking things up by demanding the impossible from the officers. He insisted on more paperwork, sensitivity training, and even community outreach programs. 
the chief preached about accountability and transparency, like some politicians on TV. All these were a bunch of feel-good nonsense in Carl's eyes. The cops believed that tough policing was what kept the streets clean. To him, what the city needed were tough cops on the streets, not social workers in blue uniforms. And worse of all, Chief Brady even shoved this Blue Bridge Alliance down their throats. It was an outreach program meant to build bridges between cops and civilians. It was supposed to teach the cops how to be kinder to people, especially minorities. Carl scoffed at the whole idea. He'd been on the force for seven years, putting his life on the line, and now he had to learn how to be polite. It felt like a slap in the face. That wasn't how you fought crime, he thought. Carl believed in tough love. He needed to show these criminals who was boss and keep them on their toes. Random stops and a little rough questioning were how he got results. To Carl and most of the other officers, Chief Brady's soft approach was just asking for trouble. It made Carl feel like a glorified babysitter, not a real cop. In Carl's mind, Chief Brady's changes were a big reason for his current predicament. Paperwork piled up under the new system, taking him away from patrol duty. Carl was filing paperwork the day that Tony and Mark had tried to sell the drugs to the street dealers. Carl felt that maybe if he'd been out there on the streets and keeping a watchful eye, things wouldn't have gotten so bad. But thanks to Chief Brady's reforms, he was stuck pushing papers while his so-called friends got him into trouble. Now he was paying the price anyway. Sure, Chief Brady deserved a lot of blame for this mess, but the person who put the vile nail into the coffin was the black woman sitting innocently in front of him. This woman wasn't just any driver. Her name was Violet Walker, and she had been an annoyance for as long as Carl could remember. Violet was a local activist and a self-proclaimed citizen journalist. She spent her days writing articles and social media posts that accused the police department of racism and brutality. Carl normally didn't care about what some journalists said. As far as he was concerned, she was just another loud voice with no idea about the real dangers on the streets. But then, one of her articles hit differently. This time, it was not just another rant. It was a well-researched expose on police corruption. The article was packed with evidence and it painted a very clear picture of a drug-dealing scheme within the police department. The article immediately went viral online and Chief Brady ordered a huge investigation. The investigation that followed was swift and brutal. Thanks to Violet's article, Tony and Mark were caught red-handed and their careers were flushed down the toilet. And now, Carl knew he might be next. As he looked at Violet's calm face through the car window, Carl felt nothing but hatred for her. She wasn't just an annoyance anymore. She was the woman who could cost him his career. She wasn't wrong about the problems in the department, but did she have to take him down with them? In Carl's mind, she wasn't fighting for justice. She was out for blood, and his career was caught in the crossfire. All because of Violet Walker and her meddling. Now he was going to teach her a lesson. Carl finally spoke up. He barked at her, telling her to step out of the vehicle. He wasn't going to let her off easy. Not today. Violet was calm and collected. In a firm but polite voice, she asked why she was stopped. She had not broken any traffic laws, so she wanted to know the reason for this stop. But Carl ignored her question. This wasn't about a traffic violation. It was about revenge. He wanted to make her feel the frustration and powerlessness he was feeling. So he repeated himself and told her to step out of the car. He wanted to search it. But Violet's gaze hardened. She insisted that this was profiling. She had done nothing wrong and her license and registration were right in the glove compartment. So Carl decided to take a look at her documents. He was hoping to find some minor infraction, anything to legitimize his anger and lock her up. Violet calmly reached into her glove compartment and produced the documents. Carl rudely snatched them and scanned the papers, but he found nothing wrong. Everything was in order. Carl was now getting frustrated. He threw the documents back at her and ordered her to step out of the vehicle, but Violet refused to be bullied. She knew her rights, and she knew she had the right to refuse a search without probable cause. But Carl didn't care. He couldn't believe this woman. The one who'd exposed his friends was making things so difficult. He was fully consumed by the urge to punish her and make her pay. Before Violet could argue further, Carl lunged forward and pulled open the car door. The unexpected movement startled Violet, but she still remained calm. She insisted that this was harassment, but Carl crossed the line. He dragged her out of the car and pushed her to the ground. Violet stumbled and landed hard on the road. She grazed her arm, but Carl still did not care. This was probably going to be his last day as a cop. He had to show her his authority. As he pinned her to the ground, he reached for the handcuffs hanging from his belt. Then something he never expected happened. Suddenly a tiny voice piped up from the back seat of the car. The boy asked, Mommy, what's happening? 
It was a young boy of barely five years, and his voice was trembling with fear. Carl froze with the handcuffs in his hands. He had been so focused on his anger with Violet that he hadn't even noticed that there was someone else in the car. As he stood up slowly, he looked into the back seat. The little boy was huddled in a corner, and his eyes were filled with terror. Tears streamed down his face, his small body trembling. The sight hit Carl like a punch to the gut. This wasn't just some woman he was dealing with. This was a mother who was scared for her child. And the fear Carl could see in the boy's eyes was not new. He had seen it countless times in the eyes of many civilians he'd stopped. All this time, he had thought it was respect for authority. But now he understood what it truly was. It was terror. They were scared of him. The realization hit him like a physical blow. The anger melted away, and it was replaced by a sickening sense of shame. Carl felt like a monster. The very thing he'd sworn to fight against. So that was how people saw him. As a bully. A monster to be feared. Carl began to stammer immediately. He took a shaky step back and tried to apologize. Violet was disappointed and hurt, but she was mostly worried for her son. She turned in her son's direction and smiled, telling him that she was okay. Carl felt even more ashamed than disgusted with himself. How could he have reacted so impulsively, so aggressively in front of a child? He had let his anger cloud his judgment and he had nearly crossed the dangerous line. Without another word, he removed the handcuffs he had slapped on Violet's wrists. As soon as he took them off, the little boy ran out of the car and hugged his mom tightly. Violet sat up and held him close and mother and son cried together. Carl stood there, feeling utterly defeated. He had come here to make her suffer, but instead, he was the one left feeling like a fool. He didn't say a word, didn't try to justify his actions. There was no justification for what he had done. He finally turned to leave with his head hung low. As he got back into his patrol car, a voice stopped him in his tracks. It was Violet's voice and it was surprisingly calm instead of the anger he expected. What she said was completely life-changing. She told him she understood that he could be going through something tough, but he should not let a bad day turn him into someone he was not. Violet's words hung heavy in the air. It was a silent plea for him to be better. Carl felt a pang of guilt. He had hated her, just because she said the truth, even though it was the truth. All Carl did was nod weakly as he climbed back into his patrol car. He just wanted to disappear. He started the engine and drove away, leaving Violet and her son standing silent on the side of the road. Back home, Carl couldn't even face his own reflection. The image of the scared child in the back seat was seared into Carl's memory. It was a wake-up call. It served as a stark reminder of the impact his actions could have on the people he was supposed to protect. The encounter with Violet changed them. He had a lot to make amends for, not just with Violet and her child, but with himself. So he knew what he had to do. He wouldn't let his anger and outdated views control him anymore. First, he needed to understand what Violet had been fighting for all this time. He dug through his files and pulled out Violet's reports on the police department. It was the one that gotten his friends caught. As Carl read it, he felt a cold dread settle on him. Everything she said was true. The racism, the lack of accountability, it was all laid bare. He couldn't deny it anymore. The realization sparked the fire within him. He spent the rest of the day and the entire night devouring Violet's work articles, social media posts, even videos. With every piece he consumed, his perspective changed. He began to see the police department through the eyes of the people they were supposed to protect. The force had problems and Carl, who had been blinded by his loyalty to his friends, had been part of it. By morning, Carl felt different. A newfound resolve settled on him. He found Violet's email address and poured his heart out in a message. He apologized for his behavior and acknowledged the truth in her words. Most importantly, he offered his help. He wanted to be part of the solution, to bridge the gap between the police and the community he served. He knew he couldn't erase the past, but he could choose a better future. Now he just had to wait and see if Violet would give him a chance. The next day arrived, and it was the internal affairs questioning day. Usually, Carl would have cooked up a story to protect his friends, but that Carl was gone. He couldn't stomach the thought of lying anymore. When the questions started, Carl answered them all truthfully. He didn't sugarcoat anything, even if it meant getting himself in trouble. He couldn't justify their actions or his own. He was ready to face the consequences, even if it meant losing his badge. Finally, the questioning ended, and Carl waited for the verdict. He expected the worst and felt he would be fired on the spot. But then something life-changing happened. To his surprise, he did not get a termination notice. Instead, he received a week's suspension without pay. They had noticed his complete honesty and introspection and felt he deserved a second chance. He felt so relieved. It wasn't the end of his career, but a second chance. Meanwhile, Justice caught up with Tony and Mark. 
They were fired from the force and slapped with criminal charges for peddling drugs they stole from evidence. Their corrupt ways finally caught up to them. As Carl walked out of the station, he felt a weight lift from his shoulders. He had chosen honesty over loyalty, and that felt good. Now he had to prove himself worthy of a second chance. But then a familiar figure caught his eye. It was Violet. Carl felt uncertain, but she approached him calmly. He was still expecting her to be angry, but instead, she told him that she had read his email. She saw it as honest and that meant something. Carl was not sure what else to say, so he thanked her. Violet added that while she had not forgotten what Carl had done, she believed in second chances. There was a group meeting that evening at the Blue Bridge Alliance, which was an NGO that focused on building bridges between police and the community. Carl knew the program. It was the same program he'd mocked before, the one Chief Brady had made them attend. Now he understood the importance of it all. The cop told her he would be honored to come. While it smiled at him before walking away, Carl was happy to have a chance to rebuild the trust he'd broken. He was ready to be part of the solution, to bridge the gap between the badge he wore and the community he was sworn to protect. The road ahead wouldn't be easy, but with honesty and the willingness to learn, Carl was finally on the right path. What do you think about this story? Do you think cops like Officer Carl deserves a second chance? Share your thoughts in the comments and let's get a conversation started. Thanks for watching.